I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is July 27, 2018, and in this video, I'm going to print out a jig for woodworking. Okay, so what is a jig and why do we even need one? So if you're unfamiliar with woodworking or a lot of machining in general, there are a lot of different things you can use a jig for. So I just looked up the definition just to get it straight for everyone. So a jig, it's not, well, it's a lively dance, sure, but it's also a device that holds a piece of work and guides the tool in operating it. So I already made one, and this is the little guy, which I need to do some adjustments on. And the idea is, this is going to help me drill holes in wood accurately, because I can come here and it will hit like that. And so I can use this to drill pieces of wood consistently. So the idea is you have it, the jig helps you do things consistently, you know, manually, because I don't have some CNC drill machine or something. Um, so what I have done recently, recently, I built a bench like the one I'm showing here. Um, I looked around at some different ideas and how to get to it. And one idea that I liked, I did an idea a little different than this, where I actually bolted them together. So as part of that, uh, I had to get a threaded, um, I had, to th had a, th a long thread that goes all the way through it. But to do that, I had to kind of, my first idea, and I did this, was to actually get a very, very long uh, drill I mean, drill here, it's a three eighths. And so I just, I got it all together and I drilled all the way down. Uh, but as I drilled down, which tends to happen, it didn't go perfectly straight. So at the end, it curved a little bit. So I was able to get my bolts through, but if you go look at my design, if you look at my bench, which if you if you weren't paying attention, you'd be like, oh, it looks like a nice bench, life is okay. If you looked a little bit deeper, You'd see, oh, uh, on one side, the nuts are kind of where they should be. On the other side, they're a little askew. Not a lot, but enough to bug me. So uh, my solution is to, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm making another one, another bench. And so I'm going to go, I made a jig so that I can hopefully get the holes consistent and then put them together. And hopefully they're consistent together. I may run this through the whole thing again after they're all together, but at least they should be consistent. But I've been waiting to do something like this for a while to make a jig because I do some woodworking and and you're always making little jigs for this and that to help you out and to be consistent. But with a 3D printer, you can kind of be exactly consistent. And also, this is a sacrificial jig that I can remake exactly the way I want. So I can design this, make this, print this, destroy this accidentally you know in this case i don't think it's going to last forever because as i as i drill through it it kind of is drilling the plastic a little bit so i don't see this lasting it'll probably last for the bench uh but beyond that it's probably not going to last much or i don't even have a need for it after that maybe um i did then i can just toss it or, or you know recycle it but the idea is i can get precision and if this only lasts for one bench and then I have to effectively toss it. Uh, and if I want to make another bench two years from now, I can just print out the jig again, which and it'll be exactly the right size I want. So I think this is 3D printing is going to be a really cool tool for making very precise, very cheap jigs for you know home woodworking. So it's like I'm getting buzzed now. Okay, a little plane flying by. So having said that, I need to go redesign this jig. And so I'm going to go redesign it right now. I have it in Fusion 360, and I'll kind of go through some, through some steps, some, some thoughts I had on fixing it. Because um, there's a few things I, did, I don't think I need to do, and one thing I do need to do. So let's go jump into that right now. Okay, so here's my design in Fusion 360. And one of the things I don't think I need to do is I made this rather tall. I don't think I need to make it that tall at all to hook onto the side. So I think I did a little overkill this first time. So what I'm going to do is go back into my sketch here. So there's my extrusion right there. So I can right click on that in the history. He says, hopefully. Okay. Right click. Okay. You're going to go back to my history. Okay. Now it's being fussy. There we go. Okay, so let me edit this feature, which is the extrusion, and I put it up 35 millimeters, but I don't think I need to put it anywhere that tall. 
So let me drop it down to, let's try 15. And then for this extrusion, I don't think it needs to be that tall either. So let me go right click on that, edit the feature. We were seven, I think we can get by with four. So I'll drop it down to four and see how that works. And then one other thing I noticed, and I'll see how well this works, I got an idea here, is as I was putting this on, I'm trying to you know, hand drill with this thing, um, and I'm trying to hold it down right here. And it's a little slippery as I'm trying to do this. So I'm thinking maybe I can put an extension on here or I can put my thumb a little further down and hold it. So I'm gonna try to design something up with that. So let me go back and edit my sketch. Oh, another thing, just on my original sketch, uh, it's important to know that when you're, well, if you've never dealt with wood before, this happens to be a two by four and a two by four isn't actually two inches by four inches. It's 1.5 inches by three inches. So I wanted that to be centered. And so you can see right here, you know, I'm going out to this circle right here. And what you can do in Fusion 360, even though I'm in metrics, I can actually type things in inches. So in here, I type 1.75 inches and it does the conversion for you. And this, we want to be alongside of that. And you know, one thing I think I did mess up, is that correct? No, that's a 45 degree angle from there. So that's okay, that's in the right position. So rather than doing this arc, I kind of want to extend this a little further. I don't need to extend that. So what do I want to do? I do some line, press, uh, let me, I don't know what I want to do. Let's see, I'll go right here, press the L, and I'll come right here, and I'll start drawing a line out. There, and there, and bring it back. And then put, I don't think it needs to be quite so, so far. Put a dimension there, and we'll say, and I'll drop it down to 50. And then I think I just really, really want a hole in there, something that will grab in there. So let me go uh, press S, and then I want a circle. Mm, maybe is that an oval? No, no, no. Circular. Oh, so let me choose a circle tool. Yeah, let me go do a let me do a line a line a line like that. Yep. And do that. Distance from here to here. Make that 10. Make that 50. Five. There we go. And uh, how about an arc? I think that'll work. Let's do an arc. Point, point. Oh, not that one. Long arc tool. Three point arc. Point, point, and bring it out. Okay, and then I need to round those corners. So I'll fill it that, and that, that, that. And I'll do that little job there. Okay, I think I'll give this a try. So let me stop my sketch. See what the results are. Yeah, I have a warning there. So let me go back on to this extrusion and the feature. And I'll subtract those. And hit OK. Oh, you know, those could use some little fillets there too. Let me go back and edit that. 
do it. There and hit stop. Okay, I think I might go add a few more features to this. This is my basic design. I'm going to go do a few more tweaks, and then I'm going to go print this out and see how well this redesign works for this jig. Okay, I got my new little jig version 2.0 printed out, and I kind of like it. I think it's going to work pretty well. But before I start showing it off and doing something with it, let me go over the numbers. So this took 2 hours and 19 minutes to print. It took 0 0.019 cents of electricity and it weighs 0 0.036 kilograms. And at $20 per kilogram of roll, that's 72 cents worth of filament. And so altogether, 74 cents to print this guy out, uh, which is not a bad deal. And it's a little bit better than my first version, which I think worked, but there were some ideas I had, like having this little pull down here, um, and also making it thinner. So this guy actually weighs 0 0.6 kilograms. And so I don't have all the statistics on this, I didn't, you know, do the electricity and all that stuff, but this is roughly about twice as much. So I think I'm gonna get the same exact results, and I probably could even make this a little thinner. I don't know, but I'm I'm okay with it. But 75 cents versus a dollar fifty plus, you know, probably twice as long to print out. So I'm pretty stoked with it. So I'm gonna go out and do some test runs. Now I did use this guy yesterday on this piece of wood, and I don't know how well it's gonna show up on the screen, but it, you know, there's the drill, just fine. And now this, this is a big deal, is I put this guy on and we can see it lines up perfectly with what this one did because essentially this is the same 3D drawing. I just added a little bit more to it and trimmed it, but I have the exact same location. So I think this would be a big deal for making jigs because you can make them repeatably. So I'm going to use this for a, a bench project I have going on and if I don't, if I, if I want to make a bench two years from now and I've lost this, uh, I'll have the file somewhere and I'll just print a new one out and be good to go. Not only that, if I want to share my bench design with someone else, I can say, oh, here's a jig, go print it out. And a lot of people could do like stuff like that. You may have a cool wood project, you make some jigs and you can hand them out. Now, you know, printing this out in two hours, you could probably hand make a jig a little bit better, quicker, um, but you don't have that repeatability and that precision for next time. So... I think that's a big deal. So let me go test this out. Let me go do some test drills with this and see if I can get that consistently with what I'm really trying to do is trying to do several layers deep. Okay, so now I got my new little wood jig here. So now I'll just get to drilling. I kind of like that I can, well, we'll see how this works. Holding it back there, get my hand out of the way. down. You can see I did drill a little bit of that out. So it is a little sacrificial. So I don't think it'll last forever. But let me go drill a few more out and see if I can accomplish what I want to accomplish is to get the drill holes precise enough for my project that I can actually get a, a rod down several of them at the same time without having to redrill the whole thing. So I'll just drill a few more here as a test. Now, see how well they line up. Yeah. That's not half bad. Trying to get them lined up this way. So this was done with the other one originally, but these three, these four, that's pretty, that's, that's lined up. Plus I was able to, well, let me see. Yeah. Not bad, we'll see how I, see how it works out when I, I'm doing a project later and I'll see how it works out. But overall, I'm pretty happy, I made a jig. Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, 
give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we are doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.